been a while I guess has it been a while a week or so um today we're making wild mint soap I don't think I've put this on film before but I've made it a couple of times so it's already made so I'll show you it's like this we've got two loaves so there's a nice minty green a cocoa line and then a nice white topping so I shall be cutting these in a moment but in between I will show you how it's made so wild mint is a fragrance from candle shack one of my favorite suppliers I have um, most of their oils really really perform well in soap so I, re I just love them as a supplier they're brilliant um, so it's nice to get, it's very sort of watery mint like a water mint it's really really good and I've not made it for about a year so it contains real mint leaf the fragrance and I'm using oxide and a mica for the colour and then some titanium dioxide for the top so that's wild mint I'm just going to pour off a bit for the white portion on the top so I want enough for the two lobes so go to about there maybe yeah only one small amount I don't want too much okay then I'm going to mix these colours into here oh, I haven't got a spoon okay so I'm using forest gold from Mike and Mama a bit of that and I'm going to mix it with some straight chromium green which is here see what that looks like okay now I'm going to pour in some of my fragrance so I'm using 80 ml here I'm only doing two loaves Preserve a bit for the white, not too much. And then I'm just going to sprinkle in my mint. And then stick around that a bit. Okay. Just leave that to the side a second so we can pour the base now into these. Luckily this uh, doesn't move fast, so there's plenty of time to play with this one. Make sure I get it relatively even on both sides. Tidy up there. And then we're going to sprinkle on the cocoa. With my trusty spoon here, it's like a little flip top, like a tea ball kind of thing, but it's more oval than a tea ball. You've probably seen me use this one lots of times. So let's get that in there. I can put this to the side just while I make up that white portion. Okay. 
Let me just make sure I've got enough on, but not too much, so I don't want it to split. I've only ever had that happen a couple of times, maybe like years ago, but not recent. I'm going to start starting out learning how to do these little techniques. I might have sprinkled too much on one, and then I think I CPOP'd it, so I put it like cold process and an oven process, and it made the top and the bottom separate off from each other, which was a bit naff. But lesson learned, don't CPOP if you're doing cocoa lines. Well, I, I just never have since. Well, I don't CPOP anymore anyway. I used to, used to do that technique, but I'd just rather see my soaps cure like, you know, normal. And if you want to learn about CPOP, I'm sure there's some videos out there. I won't be doing a demonstration for that because I don't have an oven here and I don't use that anymore. I don't do it. So, but it is possible to make your soap cure quicker by using that method. So you make your cold, cold process soap and then you put it in the oven at the lowest, lowest, lowest temperature and you leave it for a number of hours and it will cook it out very very slowly but I never I never use that technique okay titanium dioxide I'm gonna mix a bit in with some water left on that stick blender but I'm going to be using it. There's not enough on it to like actually colour it in any way so we're, we're safe. And there's the rest of the fragrance oil. thick consistency so we can get that on the top you should just be able to pour it on we'll check the base should be all right okay yeah it should be fine now just go very slowly to start with and then hopefully it won't break through to the bottom always an easier way of doing this you can just use a scoop but I just can't be bothered to go and get one so I'm gonna take a risk <laughs> and see it start to crease and if it starts creasing just move to the other side just try a bit less. That's a better technique. Go left to right. Still quite... It's not liquidy underneath, but it's liquidy enough that if I was to try and pour that on fast, it would break through the line. I don't want it to do that. I want my line to stay crisp.
Okay, I'm just going to start the other one and then we'll do the, do it at the end, finish that one. I wonder if there's any like mint essential oil in, it's not in there, a bit of mint. I wonder if there's a mint essential oil in this fragrance, I'm not sure. It's, it's very minty, but in a really different sort of, it doesn't smell like an essential oil mint yet. It smells like there could be some in there. But um, yeah, it's an interesting, it's kind of watery, is that like, yeah, watery elements to this fragrance. I really like it. But yeah, I do wonder whether there's some kind of mint in there or a mixture of mints. There could be. A lot of fragrance suppliers use essential oils in their blends, but um, you'd never know what ratio they were. Okay, now just use the rest to finish. I might just leave it like it is, like it looks already. I quite like how it looks. Just left. It's kind of nice. <laughs> like little gentle pillows of soap. Take a pic so you can see the close up. So, yeah, I might just leave it like that rather than mess with it in any way. I'm going to leave it, I think. Okay, I'll take a picture so you can see that top and I'll see you for the cut. Ta ta! Okay, we're ready to cut wild mint. So I did actually tend, end up texturing the top just a little bit, as you can see. <laughs> Let's see what we got inside. Quite simple and basic, I think. But nice and clean and fresh looking, actually. There we go. So, you can see the line slightly. Okay, and there's a nice top. So, kind of basic, but kind of nice to look at. It looks really creamy, actually. That white came out super nice. Like, you know, sometimes white, you get more of like a yellowy, creamy white, and not that nice stark white. I like a stark but creamy looking white, you know? Anyway, that's what that looks like. <laughs> oh, way. So yeah, very nice. You can just see that mint in there, giving it that nice sort of rustic, natural looking vibe. Liking that, liking that. So I just um, wanted to finish filming these videos because I'm watching a tribute video from Vans to Jeff Grosso. He's the skateboarder I mentioned in one of my last videos. And it would, it would have been his birthday. Um, so there's this tribute and I just started watching it this morning. but. I was trying to put makeup on, or just, you know, just a little bit in the morning, and I just couldn't, I kept crying. So I thought I'd better film these videos before I finish watching this, because it's just going to, it's just going to 
make me cry, you know, over and over again. It's it, these, just a massive force within the skateboarding world and it's, <laughs> honest to God, it's just so sad to lose a person that is, was so influential in uh, the best of ways. He was just, just wild and, you know, it's just really, really sad. I was talking to Matt on the phone yesterday and he, he hadn't saved it because normally we'd watch things like that together at home. I'm just going to cut this next load. And normally we watch them together, but this one, I think we both know we're going to end up in tears watching it. And with losing my sister last year, it's um, brought back a lot of feelings similar because he's a similar character. You know, he was a bit wild. My sister was nuts and... <laughs> Just crazy, and those characters, it's almost like you know that they're not going to be here for long. You know, there's there's something that they they do, they're, they're wild, you adore them, but you can see the destruction of them because they're, they're just these wild characters that come into the world briefly. You know, it feels like when they're gone, it feels like, whoa, that was a short amount of time, even though it wasn't really. You know, they both, like my sister died when she was 49 and I think Jeff Grosso was 51 maybe. So it's the era that we come from, it, you know, it was it was crazy. Like if you look, look at the 90s and it's no wonder that people are starting to croak around 50 years of age because <laughs> it's just, we were ridiculous, an absolutely ridiculous um, generation for drugs and alcohol and everything in between you know it's just like this live fast die young thing and um now that a lot of us you know a lot of us became sensible like didn't want to die early and now we're left losing the people that didn't take care of themselves you know and it's just it's just so sad but at the same time absolutely inevitable if you're going to mess with your body in the ways that they did then you're going to pay the price and suffer consequences not suffer because i mean you know once you're dead you're dead <laughs> it's hard to be so frank but that's the way it is it's like if you really i'll just show you these if you really really mess with yourself and you you don't care in your 20s of course you don't because you're healthy and you, it's all you know you're living fast you're living this nutty life and everything's funny and everything's fun and those people you need them you need them in life you need them to make you not take life so seriously sometimes but you also need um you know people to keep you on the straight and narrow when they can see that you're going off the edge and the people that go off the edge you can't stop them you know, it's just one of those things. So anyway, it's brought back a lot of emotion for me to watch this guy's tribute because he was a very similar character to my sister. And um, yeah, it's very, it's hard to watch and it's hard to not cry watching things like that because it just stirs up the emotions to a place where you, you don't want these people to ever be gone, but they, they do go. <laughs> We lose them. We lose them all the time. And, you know, I suppose it's a generational thing. There's always the nutty ones and there's always the ones who are sensible and there's always the ones who are sort of maybe a bit in between. And I think that's probably where I am at. Like, I did dabble and I was stupid and I did stupid things, but there was always that thing in the back of my head where I didn't want to be a full-on junkie or, you know, alcoholic or... I didn't want to be that. And so I did keep myself kind of straight in a way. But anyway, if you're interested, I'll leave the link to this tribute below. Um, so I know there's a few people who've got like sons who skateboarded, you know, there's lots of other people that are into skateboarding that follow me here. So if you haven't seen it yet, I'll leave the link below and it's it's by Vans, the channel. So I'll leave it. I think it's Vans that are doing it. There's a couple anyway, but I'll leave a link below so you can have a look if you're interested. Um, and yeah, I will see you for the next soap. Ta-ta.